Hello, my name is Frank Christensen, and I'm the coordinator of officials for IFAF in Europe. This is the fifth of six training tapes dealing with false start. Today we're looking specifically at running backs in the offensive backfield. Uh, the running back false starting typically looks a lot different than, for example, the quarterback if he false starts in the backfield. So we'll have a look at some examples of, of what that looks like, uh, how much is enough, and, and when we shouldn't call it. And we'll, we'll look at mechanics and philosophy in terms of how we want to handle this and who we want to handle this. But before we get to the game film, let's have a look in the rulebook and the mofo to see what they have to say on this topic. In the rulebook, we go to rule 712 dealing with false start. Each of the following is a false start by team A if it occurs prior to the snap, after the ball is ready for play, and all players are in scrimmage formation. 1. Any movement by one or more players that simulates the start of a play. 2. The snapper moving to another position. And 3. A restricted lineman according to rule 227.4, moving his hand or making any quick movement. As for the exceptions, 1. A. It is not a false start if a team A lineman immediately reacts when threatened by a team B player in the neutral zone. B. It is not a false start if the snapper takes his hand off the ball provided this does not simulate the start of a play. And then four, it is also a false start when an offensive player makes a quick jerky movement before the snap included but not limited to A, a lineman moving his foot, shoulder, arm, body or neck in a quick jerky motion in any direction. B, the snapper shifting or moving the ball, moving his thumb or fingers, flexing his elbows, jerking his head or dipping his shoulders or buttocks. C. The quarterback making any quick jerky movement that simulates the beginning of a play. And D. A back simulating receiving the ball by making any quick jerky movement that simulates the beginning of the play. And finally, 5. The offensive team never coming to a one second stop prior to the snap after the ball is ready for play. This is an illegal shift that converts to a false start. In the MOFO, we go to section 3-2 definitions. Examples of conspicuous, conspicuous fouls that should be called, even though they might otherwise be disregarded as not serious, include F. False start by a back, tight end, or receiver. In section 3-3, non-contact fouls, false start says, movement by an offensive player is not a false start unless either 1. He moves one or both feet, 2. It is sudden or 3. It causes a defensive player to move in reaction. If a running back misses the snap count, makes a sudden movement and then stops abruptly, it is a false start. If he was generally going into motion, he wouldn't stop. And finally, uh, if in doubt as to whether movement was prior to the snap or not, it was not. Don't be picky on this. Now, let's have a look at some game film. In the first couple of examples, we're going to look at, at movement that is not enough for a false start. So here the running back is just going to make a little adjustment there. That is not the kind of flinch or, or jerky movement or, or a, uh, a simulated start of the play that we're looking for in a false start. So this movement right there is, is just an adjustment. You know, it's pretty close to the snap, but it's not what we're looking for in a false start. On this play, the running back doesn't really move as much as he just kind of leans forward a little bit before the snap. But really, this is not enough uh, for us to call a false start. Uh, certainly could be a talk to and, and let the running back know that, hey, make sure you don't lean uh, forward before the snap. But but at, at most, this is not what we're looking for in a false start either. 
uh, as opposed to the place that we're getting into uh, from now on. If we look at this running back, uh, he simply just uh, misses the snap count and he jumps too early uh, right there. This is um, this is the start of the play for him and it's just before the ball is snapped. So this is not uh, going into motion. Uh, this is way too abrupt. Uh, this is a flinch or, or jerky movement uh, and certainly too abrupt for us not to call it. and, and uh, and, and this is what we're looking for in a false start in a running back. Here we're looking at the, the fullback. There are actually two running backs here. And the fullback is going to do a lean, but the lean is, is, is it turns into a little step there right before the snap. So this is more than the lean we saw before. And this is too much... Um, for us to ignore or or handle with the talk to and and here we have a good situation or a good example of why it's important for the wing or for the uh, for the backfield officials to focus primarily in the backfield pre-snap if if this referee is looking uh at the line of scrimmage or or you know the the tackle that he may be responsible for after the snap if it turns into a, a pass play then we're likely to to, to miss these types of, of small uh, flinches uh, in the backfield. So, so keep your primary focus at least in the backfield and we will keep, we will uh, notice and catch these types of, of false starts by the running back. On this play, we're looking at the movement by the by the tailback here, the running back, and and again, it's just a lean, but but it just gets a little bit too big, uh, and we almost get a uh, get a step there before the snap is is uh, where the ball is snapped. So this is this is too much to let go, and again, a um, good reminder of why as as both the referee and the center judge uh, to keep your focus in the backfield. Uh, so that we catch this and, and uh, we have the uh, the end zone shot where we can see pretty much what what they see. So here's the end zone shot and and here you can you can clearly see that he starts leaning towards that left side and and, and his heel actually even lifts off the off the uh, the turf before the ball is snapped. So again, this is this is big enough that we want to call it, and a good indicator or, or a good example of of why it's important to keep your primary focus in the backfield as referee, center judge, because if you're looking at at your tackle or, or anything else, you may miss this because it's not a flinch, it's not an abrupt movement. In this last example, we're going to see another running back who just mistimes the snap so he moves he moves up because he thinks here the ball is going to be snapped again this is not the start of a motion this is way too abrupt uh in a, in a flinchy or jerky movement uh and this is one that that we that we need to call and i'm glad we called caught it here so that was that was the training tape uh i hope it makes sense and i hope you found something you can use on the field